We read this morning from the sixth chapter of Mark. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and all that they had taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going, they did not even have a chance to eat, Jesus said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got to the quiet place ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. When the disciples had crossed over the water, they landed at Gennesaret, anchored there. And as soon as they got out of the people, out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard that he was. Wherever he went, into villages, towns, or out in the country, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. The word from the Lord in the house of the Lord. David wanted to take things into his hand. He was going to build a nice place to put the ark. Going to build it out of cedar. Cedar lasts forever. So he's going to make a nice place. And God said through Nathan... I'll let you know when I want something built. In the meantime, I'm building a place for my people to be. And he also promised David that he would protect him from his enemies for a while. That everything was good. He did also mention that Solomon would be the one who would build the temple, not David. God wanted his people to be content. He wanted his people to to be happy. He wanted his people to be enthusiastic about their relationship with God. I, I love the report we got from the, from the carnival that they had for the foster kids. We had a disastrous backpack buddy week. Uh, they set up for 200 to come on Tuesday afternoon and 37 showed up. We were prepared to do 1,500 backpacks on Wednesday morning. The first bus that arrived had one child on it. The second bus had three. The fourth bus had zero. This was a special day. This was two new school shirts, a pair of shoes, socks, underwear, backpack full of school stuff. And all the parents had to do was get the kids out of bed and get them on a bus. Everything else was taken. It isn't like it was brand new to them. They were first notified in April, and then in May, and then again this summer. And we did seven or 800. We need to get enthusiastic about things that are important to be enthusiastic about. We need to figure out what it is that God is deeply calling us to do. I mentioned earlier, we're going to get a 65,000 seat stadium up in Las Vegas that will screw up the, the traffic every weekend. <laughs> Not that it needs much more messing up than it already has. Then there will be 65,000 people who show up there screaming and yelling and and some of them may watch a football game. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I, don't, I have nothing against sports. My wife will tell you I umpired and refereed and so forth for about 40 years. I loved the games. I loved, I loved doing high school sports. And then they decided we had to have state champions. We couldn't just play the game. And I remember one night in a little town in Wisconsin where it was raining hard. And I had two teams on the field who had not won a game between them. And near the end of the fourth quarter, a young man broke his leg. 
and we were 22 miles from the hospital, 22 miles from the fire department, 22 miles from the ambulance. And so while we waited, and the young man was on the field, and we covered him up with parkas and tried to keep him as dry as possible, and we sent both teams into the locker rooms to get him out of the weather, and, and I thought, this is a travesty. We're going to play a... They, they had to play, because the ranking of somebody in the playoffs would depend on which team won the game. They couldn't tie. They couldn't quit. We're so deeply into the, the results. We're so deeply into, into the nitty-gritty of, of celebrations and, and carrying on and so forth that we can't be humane. We have to, we have, to have a conclusion. And God said, the conclusion is love me. Because I already love you. Jesus went across the lake to let his disciples get some rest because they'd been working hard. He'd sent them out two by two to preach the gospel, to change people's lives, to heal in his name. And they came back and told him how wonderful it had been and how successful they'd been. And there were so many people around they couldn't even get a meal. So he said, let's go. We'll go rest. And the people gave him no rest. They figure out, you know, it's not a very big lake. Sea of Galilee is just not a very big thing. So they knew about where they were going to go, so they ran there ahead of them. And they were waiting there with all of the sick, all of the lame, all of the, the people who needed to be healed. And they brought them to Jesus, and he taught them, and he healed them. He made them whole physically. But you know, what the story doesn't say, what the story doesn't tell us today, every one of them who came was healed. How many were saved? How many went home professing love? How many went home feeling that he was it? Oh, I mean, I'm sure they were very grateful that he had healed them. I'm sure he was very, or they were very grateful that their friends had brought him, brought them to Jesus because so many of them were crippled and couldn't get there without friends. Because that's what friends do for friends. They help them in their darkest hour. They help them in their greatest need. But how many of them did understood that Christ didn't just heal their body? but gave them an opportunity to have their heart healed, have the, gave them an opportunity to become one with him and to be totally saved. In Paul's letter, it says, says that we have to remember that, that there's no difference between the circumcised and the uncircumcised. That was a big deal then. It's not a big deal anymore. But what he was pointing out simply is that just because you've been part of the party before, doesn't mean you're invited to the party at the very end. Everybody gets an invitation, but how many, how many will accept that invitation? Yeah, Jesus and his disciples had to work hard, had to heal all these people. We don't know how many there were, it doesn't say. But what scares me, what scares me is that we get so enthusiastic about so many things that we forget to be enthusiastic about the one thing. They were healed. The lame could get up and walk, the deaf could speak and, or could hear and the blind could see. But what did they see? Did they see a future better than it was or did they see in front of them the source of salvation? Yeah. We had, to have a, we had to finish a game that meant nothing. We had to finish a game that meant nothing to the, to the kids who were involved in play, but it meant something because, I hate to say this, 
but the State Athletic Association was going to make a lot of money off the playoffs. The only reason that we do that to kids is because there's a payoff somewhere. We don't do it for love. Oh, yeah, we, I like going out to River Valley. You realize if you go to River Valley to a football game, you walk in free if you're as old as I am. <laughs> and some of you who are not quite as old as I am can get in free, too. <laughs> and when they had good teams, it was a lot of fun. No, they're not doing so good, so maybe it's not so much. It's easy to get excited about things like that that ultimately mean nothing. Oh, it's good for the kids. They get exercise. They learn discipline. They learn teamwork. They learn, love, learn to care for each other. But do they anywhere, anytime, learn to accept the fact that, well, God can make our bodies whole, or doctors can make our bodies whole. Only. Only Christ can make our souls whole. And the, and the people who were healed along the river bank or the lake shore or in the villages or in the town, yeah, they went home and their families were happy. But how many, how many were saved? Every one of them was off, and offered the opportunity, just as every one of us is offered the opportunity. But the important thing is not that God, that Christ can heal all of our souls if he chooses but that our souls remember who did it for us. That our souls remember he did it for me. Each of you can say, he did it for me. Because it wasn't for everybody. He didn't come to save the congregation of this church. He came to save every one of you. Not all of you. Every one of you. And that's the important thing to remember about the healing on the seashore. He healed them all. How many did he save? Because it isn't always his choice who he will save. No, almost every time it's not his choice who he will save. It's who is willing to be saved by him. We build a temple for God in our own hearts. We build a temple for God that's indestructible in our own soul. Jesus told, da or God told David, it's not the time to build, me a, build a place for the ark that's, that's permanent. It's still good to be in a tent. But eventually, we have to find a place where God is permanent in our hearts. We can know him temporarily, but until we recognize that being healed is not the same as being saved, we're missing the boat. He didn't come to heal all the hearts. He didn't come to save all the people. He came to save every one. Every one. Amen. Promise yourself to get enthusiastic about what's important, about love, about mercy, about peace, and go in that peace. Amen.